All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Today I'm in the car that I would buy if I wasn't into cars. It's this 2013 Honda CRV. It's certainly all the car anyone could possibly need. It's spacious, safe, practical, and very nicely turned out. You know, every single time I drive a car like this, I wish, well, for a split second anyway, I wish that I wasn't into cars because my life would be so much easier, less stressful. Who knows, I might even have a savings account. Quick history lesson, the Honda CRV has been around since 1996, and in that time it's become a very common sight all over the world. They've sold nearly five million CRVs. This is the fourth generation CRV, which has been around since 2012 and ran until 2018. It's available as a two wheel drive or a four wheel drive, petrol or diesel, manual or auto. Fairly standard stuff, really. The exterior styling is quite innocuous and inoffensive. It's about as far from being good looking as it is from being bad looking. It's just, it just exists. The rear quarter or D pillar is a little bit funny looking, but the rest of it is perfectly acceptable. If you end up buying one though, I guarantee you'll never stop for a second look as you're putting your key through your front door. It just isn't that kind of car. This is a tool to do a job and you'll treat it as such. Moving inside the CRV, I think the best word to describe the interior is sensible. It's all sensible. Everything's logically laid out. I haven't found a single thing within the CRV that I've thought, oh, that's a nice touch. I wasn't expecting that. But that doesn't really matter. There are lots of people in the world who will much rather good old fashioned reliability over gimmickry. All of the materials used are of great quality, but it is a little bit, I don't want to use the word boring because that's a little bit too harsh, but it is, it's a bit uninspiring. It has absolutely everything you could possibly wish for, but nothing that will stir the soul. It is very easy to live with though. There are a couple of nice touches though. For example, this down here, this being an automatic model, my left leg is completely redundant. So Honda have thought about that and given me a nice cushioned leather pad here to rest my knee against. I like the traditional automatic gear selector. I like the fact they've given you a traditional old fashioned handbrake rather than a silly foot pedal or electric switch. The climate control is very easy to use and operate. The steering wheel feels nice to use and all the buttons are easy to figure out. One thing that isn't easy to figure out though is the infotainment system. It's too fussy and fiddly and complicated. I suppose if this was your main car you'd get used to it in time, but it isn't intuitive at all. It does have a good quality reverse camera though, and I like that the near side mirror dips in reverse so you can see the kerb. I like the fact there's plenty of storage inside, the door bins are a good size, you get triple cup holders, you have a nice soft comfortable armrest here with more storage underneath. One feature the CRV has is a speed warning. So you can set it to 30 miles an hour, so the minute you hit 31, it will beep to inform you you're now speeding. Sounds quite handy, but in practice it's quite annoying and quite difficult to turn off. You really need a PhD in IT to figure out how to disable it. At school I was in the top set for IT, and it still took me three days to figure out how to turn this off. The driving position's very good, it's an easy car to get in and out of. Visibility is excellent because you sat up high. But it doesn't feel like you're sat in a bar stool, it feels like you're driving a car, just with better visibility. The steering's nice and light and easy to manoeuvre. It's a very easy car to drive this, nothing is taxing. I love the panoramic glass roof, which comes with a blind which you can close at the touch of a button. I like the fact you can open and close the tailgate from this button here. And also you can open and close it manually and it doesn't throw a stroppy hissy fit. There are various trim levels, but you're better off going for the top spec EX model because it really has every single extra that you'd expect to find on any other luxury car. Everything is sturdy and well built, as if it's been built to specifications rather than to a budget. Where this car really shines though is practicality. It feels very spacious. There's plenty of room up front, plenty of room in the back for three people. The seats are very comfortable and supportive. The transmission tunnel is minimal, so even the person that's stuck in the middle seat has somewhere for the legs. The boots are very good size and it's just the right height to load things in and out of easily. There are lots of cars that are too low or too high, this is just right. With the rear seats in place you get 590 litres of boot space, which is more than you get from the equivalent RAV4 or VW Tiguan. If you're a person with hobbies such as mountain biking or golfing, this might be the perfect car for you. If you need to carry larger items the seats fall down very easily, all you do is pull a lever and they do the work for you. I mean how clever is that? It's a very pleasant car to drive, it rides very well, it isn't overly bumpy or firm. You won't notice when you run over a pothole. What you will notice though, is the refinement and the silence. When you start this 2 litre petrol it's eerily quiet, it almost feels like an EV. Honda claim they've reduced the interior noise by 3 decibels, and you can really tell. 
there's not much wind or road noise and that all adds to the feeling of luxury and good build quality. Unsurprisingly it's a very safe car too, it comes with a whole raft of safety technology to keep you and your occupants in one piece. You get traction control, lane keep assist, trailer stability assist, I mean this is like Volvo levels of safety tech. I bet Tiger Woods couldn't crash this car. I'll probably get in trouble for this next comment because it isn't very PC but I'm sure you'll agree with me. This is the kind of car that you'd buy for your other half to do the school run in, to go to the shops, knowing that they'll get there in one piece, on time, without breaking down. You can then relax knowing they'll be safe and comfortable. I mean, as a petrol head, you'll probably hate it because it's on the wrong side of being bland. But as a family car, or for somebody who isn't into cars, it's pretty good. The other kind of person the CRV is perfect for, again, this isn't very PC, and it's probably a little bit ageist too, is the retired person. So you're retired, so you've got a, a finite amount of money to see you out. You don't want something that's going to be draining your bank account or breaking down every five minutes. You want something that's dependable and reliable. This is the perfect safe car to run your grandchildren around in. They'll love it too, knowing that their inheritance isn't being frittered away frivolously. Honda offered the CRV with a few different engine options. There was a 2.2 or a 1.6 turbo diesel, or a 2 litre petrol. Under the bonnet of this one is the 2 litre 4 cylinder petrol engine, and it only produces about 153 horsepower and about 140 yard foot pound of torque, which isn't a lot. And that means this car isn't particularly quick. It's quite laid back. You really can't rush this thing. See what I mean? It has a zero to 60 time of around 12 seconds, a top speed of 114 miles per hour. It isn't dangerously slow, it's, it's all right. And on the bright side, you'll keep your driving license clean. Road tax here in the UK on this petrol four-wheel drive auto is £275 a year, which isn't bad for this kind of car. Obviously a two-wheel drive diesel manual will be far less. Around town this two litre petrol auto will do 27, 28 miles per gallon, and on a motorway run it should do 38, 40 miles per gallon. The diesels are much more economical. The little 1.6 is capable of 60 miles per gallon. As if this car wasn't slow enough, there's also an economy button. Press that. But it feels as though time slows down. It might be a bit of a gimmick, but it might help to save you two or three miles per gallon. This two litre petrol auto won't be the most efficient engine to go for. The little diesel will certainly do more miles per gallon, and it will be cheaper in the short term. But I suspect in the long term, the cost of ownership will average out. If you think about this sensibly, over a five or 10 year ownership period, the diesel will cost you things like clutch, probably a flywheel, a sticking EGR, a clogged DPF, a blown turbo perhaps, whereas the auto won't go wrong. So any savings you'll make on fuel on the diesel, you might spend in repairs. So over five or ten years, they should balance out. If you don't do many miles, or you do mainly city driving, I would wholeheartedly recommend the petrol. This segment is massively competitive and hugely overcrowded. So if you're into blasting on B roads, you'd be better off with BMW X3. If you need a more rugged, capable 4x4, then you're better off with a Freelander 2 or a Disco Sport. But if you're neither of those things and you just want a safe, reliable, dependable, practical car to transport you and your family around in, then you've only got two options really. It's either this or a Toyota RAV4. Whenever I see somebody behind the wheel of a VW Tiguan with its dodgy DSG box, or a Ford Cougar with its terrible diesel injectors, I always think, why didn't you just buy a RAV4 or a CRV? It will do the same job, and it will cost you less to run. Use prices here in the UK for a fourth gen CRV start at around £7,000. That's going to get you an early, low spec, high mileage model that's probably seen more paint than the tip of Pablo Picasso's brush. For a decent, high spec, low mileage example, I expect to spend between £11,000 and £12,000. For a four wheel drive automatic, maybe £1,000 more than that. When you think about it, that's an awful lot of car for the money. You could keep it for 10 years and it will do its job every single day, and it won't cost you an awful lot in upkeep or repairs. They're famously reliable, I can't think of any common issues to warn you about, and servicing costs are low. After driving this, I have a newfound respect for the CRV. I can respect and appreciate the build quality and the reliability. So if you're not a car guy or girl, and you just need a safe, dependable car, then you should certainly consider the CRV. So thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know below. 
and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you're interested in getting into the used car business, do check out my online course, I'll leave the link below. I've made nearly 100 videos which explain every single aspect of the used car business. How to start, where to start, how to advertise, how to buy cars, where to buy cars from, trade plates, insurance, everything you could possibly wish to know is all there on this online course. So, cheers guys, see you next time.